everyone. This is Dr. Indradeep Kumar, Assistant Professor, IRE, Hyderabad. So, in previous video, we had seen about the OB, why OB is required, then how program specific outcomes, program outcomes, and course outcomes are mapped, how that is related to that particular course. So, now in this video, we will start the course that is named as Aerospace Structure. Okay. So, the first topic of this course is what? From the module one, that is structural components of aircraft. So, first we will see all the basic components, how Dudes is acting on that, then what is the function and all. Right. So, these things we will see and then we will go for the derivations, numerical and all. So, first is we are starting with the theory parts. So, the see, the topic will be covered in this video are aircraft structural component and the function of a structural element. Here just see a structural element and later see we will, we will see the function of a structural components. Okay. So, these two things we will see in this video. So, first one is aircraft structural components. Okay. So, what are the components are they are these things. Okay. Related to the structure. So, first wings, fuselage, tails, unit and control surface are the basic component of an aircraft structure. So, these four are the basic components of an aircraft. In that many are there like wings in itself many are there like flap, aileron, many things are there. In fuselage also many things are there but the main, most important thing is these four. Fuselage, wing for connecting engines, other things. Fuselage where passenger can sit, cargo or anything. Tail plane that is the backside of that aircraft to control and to control surfaces. That is in wing as well as the rear or tail units also. So, these are the four what the or you can say the primary components of an aircraft. For any aircraft these four things must be there. Okay. Now, based on that depending upon what type of aircraft is there according to that these things the other things will get added in that one. So, there are variations in a specific aircraft. So, just depending upon the aircraft. For example, a delta wing aircraft. So, just see a wing is there right. But now the shape of the wing changes to what delta wing. So, delta wing aircraft does not always have a horizontal tail. So, it is not necessary if delta wing is there. Delta wing is what? It's like this type of okay delta triangular type. Okay, so this is not necessary that always this should be horizontal. This can be vertical also in just uh, like this, right? Or at some particular angle also, though it does in a canard configuration. So, means next is what the canard configuration, like the Eurofighter. So, that is the aircraft name in which they use the canard configuration, that typhoon. Okay, so now the see wing is there, but shape changed is now the configuration changed and you can see according to that the aircraft name also or their purpose also changed. Each component performs one or more specific function and must be designed to perform these functions safely. So, whatever the components are they are, I, they have either one or more particular or a specific function is there like wing control surfaces that will control only. In control surface you cannot put the passenger, or you cannot put the cargo. If fuselage is there in that you cannot with the fuselage you cannot control the aircraft, right. So, they have their specific work. If fuselage is there, means their passenger will sit cargo, you can keep those things, okay. Control surface is there, with that only you can control. So, they have their specific function, either one or more. And they are designed in a such a way, so that they can perform their function safely, means with safety they can perform their function. So, in this chapter, we will discuss the various loads that aircraft components are subjected to means uh, what are the loads acting on that aircraft, how that is there, what are the effect. Okay. So, function and fabrication as well as design of connections, how they can be designed, right. So, like uh, for connecting two things, rivet is required or joint is required. So, which type of joint we can use that one. Okay. So, these things we will see in this unit or module or you can say the chapter. Okay. So, the structure of an aircraft must support two distinct classes of load. Okay. So, two distinct classes. What are? First one is ground load. So, two are there in ground when aircraft is in ground or second is the air load when aircraft is in air. So, first ground load. What are the ground loads? So, just see ground loads which include all loads encountered by the aircraft during movement or transportation on the ground. So, it's not like that plane is or aircraft is standing then what are that time also some load will be there that also. But generally when we are considering when that 
it's a started moving or you can say the taxiing okay taxiing or transportation on the ground means when it is in touch with the ground that time it's in during the movement or what whatever the force they are experiencing the or whatever the load they are experiencing that called as ground load such as just yes yeah such as taxiing and landing loads okay while landing what the load will experience by the aircraft and during the taxiing what towing and hoisting load so these are the ground loads that after coming in contact with the earth only is acting on the aircraft and that's why this is called as ground load next is air load which includes load imposed on the structure during flight by maneuvers and gas. so air load means once that flight starts or once the plane starts flying that time because of their maneuver or because of the gust or like air pressure or anything whatever the load experienced by the aircraft in the air that is called as the air loads okay so means when aircraft is touching with the ground or it's in touch with the ground then whatever the loads will act on that aircraft that is called as ground load when they are in the flying condition or in air you in that case means in air whatever the loads acts on that aircraft because of either maneuver or because of gust that is called as air load so means air load is just because of the movement in the air or in air whatever the things is that load will act furthermore aircraft designed for a specific role encounter loads unique to their field of operation means whatever the type of is there that is specific role if suppose passenger aircraft is there it can carry passenger only if cargo aircraft is there it can carry cargo only and fighter aircraft means their design will be different and that will be as a fighter aircraft only we can use it's not like that fighter aircraft we can use for the passenger aircraft for carrying the passenger or passenger aircraft can send to the fighter aircraft because they have the they have their specific role okay and based on that role only load will act on that or like fighter aircraft you can see the shape is just a straight part right compared to the this one passenger one so they are experiencing more forces and with that only it can fly faster okay compared to the uh, this passenger aircraft passenger aircraft that uh, the slowest one is the cargo aircraft that is speed and that uh, passenger aircraft is slightly greater than the cargo and fighter aircraft even back number 3 4 5 that hypersonic supersonic level it goes so depending upon their specific use okay carrier born aircraft for example are subjected to catapult take off and arrested landing load means whatever the landing load is there no so just cat that this one in you can see in ship and all one is small that even that iron wire or the vertic wires are there okay once it's touching the um, aircraft this one on the naval ship or anything they just those wire iron wire or cable uh, touch with the this one the landing gear and it just stops to otherwise whatever if it won't stop because that much longer runway is not there so that will cross and that will go into the ocean so that type are there so that's why carrier bond aircraft means some carrier like in ins vikram though you can say that is also this one on that what happened how the land will landing will be there because for any fighter aircraft or anything long landing required means longer runway required most large civil and nearly all military aircraft have pressurized cabin for high altitude flying so whatever the civil okay aircraft are there and military aircrafts they are first pressurize their cabin why because once it will go up their pressure is less so whatever the passenger or cabin crew or that means uh, inside a human is there they cannot survive in that pressure so for that whatever the pressure we required here according to that they are pressurizing there and based on that only we can sustain even in fly once you will fly that time so once it will take off that time you just feel like something here near to your ear that's a something out there you just feel okay some changes are there okay so just because of the pressure and in that also before starting the aircraft they are just announcing what if suppose low pressure arises or because of any reason then what happens suddenly the mask will drop and then you have to wear that mask okay so all the passenger aircraft military aircraft are pressurized amphibious aircraft must be capable of landing on water and that's why their name is amphibious because which can land on water as well as the earth 
Aircraft designed to fly at high speed at low altitude, such as tornado, requires a structure of above average strength. So, whatever the structure is there, that must be above the average strength to withstand the effect of flight in extremely turbulent air. So, just see the condition that should fly with higher speed and at lower altitude. Some are there at higher speed and higher altitude that can fly easily, then that is not the, that much issue. But the thing is at the lower where the pressure is more, at the near to that surface pressure is more as we move up, pressure is getting decreased. So that average strength to withstand, they must have average strength because their speed is too high and altitude is lower. So that effect of flight is extremely turbulent here. So because of that, it's a that their effect is turbulent in air. Okay, so the next. The two types of load are further subdivided. Now, ground loads and air loads further subdivided as what? Surface force, which acts on the structure surface, such as aerodynamic and hydrostatic pressure. So, now the, uh, that is divided as what? First, surface force. So, surface force is the forces which act on the surface. So, which act on the surface is, is that a structure surface, whatever the structure is, all the body of that aircraft. On their surface, it's acting such as what are the things such as aerodynamic and hydrostatic pressure so that's why according to that we are giving the aerodynamic shape if that blunt body is there then it will experience more force so we are giving aerodynamic shape so that the force will that lesser force will act on that one and hydrostatic where the pressure is there because of the fluid that is hydrostatic and fluid is there so because of that air whatever the pressure is there that is the hydrostatic pressure next is body force which act over the structure's volume a structure's volume, how the bigger size is there, what is the volume of the structure and are caused by gravitational and inertial effects. So gravitational means what? Total weight of the so that a structure volume is weight of the aircraft. So weight wherever weight is there means mass into gravitational by mg that is the weight only right. So mass into so what is w equals to mg. With mass we can find the volume. So in terms of volume we can write volume and G that relation so that is that depends on what the gravitational okay and inertial effect so according to Newton first law so that also inertial effect will be there just because of the volume the calculation of the distribution of aerodynamic pressure over the various surfaces on an aircraft's structure is covered in many aerodynamic textbook and will not be attempted here because this is the aerodynamic pressure how that is there that is one separate subject itself is there that you will study that is called as aerodynamics okay so here we will not discuss about what uh, aerodynamic forces okay that how that air, aerodynamic forces or uh, hydrostatic forces will act because that is a totally different and that even you have one particular subject itself that is called as aerodynamics okay however we will discuss the type of loads induced by these various effects and their impact on the various structure component but we will see Wow. Because of that load, what happened? That load induced the various effects. What are the effects of because of that aerodynamics? Because if aerodynamics load is there, okay. So then what happened? What effect will be on the structure? What is the impact on the various structural components? These things we will see here. Essentially, all air loads are the result of pressure distribution over the skin surface. So whatever the air loads are there, that is because of what? pressure distribution over the skin surface caused by a steady flight maneuver or gust condition. So whatever the condition either it's a steady flight is there means when it's a in a steady condition maneuver like from takeoff landing these things turning okay or gust condition because of the air disturbance. So because of these things whatever they are there that is just because of the pressure distribution. So pressure distribution over the surface of that one because of what? STD flight maneuvers are first condition. These resultants in general cause direct load, bending, sear, and torsion in all parts of the structure. So, because the sear, the pressure distribution is there, this pressure is different. The pressure difference is there, and because of the pressure difference, definitely the structural damage will be there. Why that damage will be there? So, because of that pressure distribution, these cases arise what causes direct load. Bending because of that also it will get bent, sear and torsion depending upon how these loads are acting on that one and based on that the load name will be there. Okay, 
in all parts of the structure in addition to local normal pressure loads on the scale so in addition that local pressure already that is there okay because of their structural and their weight and normal pressure which is acting based on that even any addition to this all direct loads bending shear and torsion these things will also act on the skin of the aircraft now the second one is the function of a structural element so now here you will see the function of a structural element how that things are there so aircraft are typically constructed from the following basic components that all so we are already we have seen that wings fuselage tail unit control surface so just here this part from here okay so this is the fuse lash okay these are the wings okay then this part is the tail unit that tail unit is out everything which is towards this one not one or two part and control surface so control surfaces are here rudder these things are the control surfaces in this also aileron flap these things are there those are the control surface through which it can control okay so now just see here because of this pitching moment is there okay then aircraft weight this is so aircraft weight is vertically acting down so lift will vertically up so just see here in both the side wing will lift up this is the aircraft this sorry this is the wing and this is the aircraft okay so now because of this aircraft this and this wing what happen that uh, pressure will act down or weight will act down so lift will act both the side that uh, they will experience the this side of the wing also and this side of the wing also so because of these two side that will move up and that is only the lift and because of that only the aircraft will move up then drag here drag means just resistive force which cannot allow to move further and the other one will be the thrust here because of that only it moves in the forward condition so now our target is what to uh, increase the thrust and reduce the drag now again if suppose we have to turn the flight right so just we have to turn then what happen because of that particular axis here that yawing moment will act means we have to create the yawing moment there to just take the turn function of a structural element that is continued there are differences between aircraft for example a delta wing aircraft does not always have horizontal tail though it does not does in a canard configuration like the eurofighter typhoon that already we had seen that is the function is if delta is there that doesn't mean delta will be always horizontal that can be vertical at some particular angle also each component perform one or more specific function and must be designed to perform these functions safely that should be there now a structural component loads the structure of an aircraft must support two distinct class of load what ground loads which includes all load encountered by the aircraft during movement or transportation on the ground such as taxiing and landing loads towing and hoisting loads so these are means just a simple earlier also i explained that if when that aircraft is in touch with the ground then whatever the load experienced by the aircraft structure that is called the ground loads and the same thing when it is in air then whatever the load they will experience that will be the air load so air load which includes load imposed on the structure during flight by maneuver or and gust hmm. okay so surface forces which act on the structure surface such as aerodynamic and hydrostatic pressure and body forces which act over the volume of the structure and are produced by gravitational and inertial effects are the two types of load so these two are the sur surface load which acting on the surface and the second one is the body force or we can say the because of the volume whatever the, the force they will experience essentially all air loads are the result of pressure distribution over the skin surface caused by the steady flight maneuver or gust condition so that is essential this all the load whatever it will act that should have what the pressure distribution so because of the pressure distribution whatever the load is acting during the steady flight maneuver or gust conditions in these components these in general these outcomes result in direct load bending shear and torsion so because of the pressure distribution what are the things happened they will experience the direct load bending also shear and torsion now the thing is what is shear you already studied in mechanics of solid 
right but still just to see here means along the surface if any force is like as opposed from here we can apply the force okay and instead of applying here like we can apply here also so these things are just normal to the surface if that is there at some particular angle also we can apply at same if we are applying the stress along this surface okay along miss just these four are they just imagine four papers are there okay just here kept all four layers of any object is there now what i will do why when i will apply on the upper surface so this upper surface will get deformed this will move just see these three are not moving right so this upper surface will be in stress so that's why that is called as the shear stress so now what happened this will start shifting you know that deformation these things these other layers remains same so such type of the stress is called as the shear stress that acts tangentially or the, over the surface only okay in addition to local normal pressure load imposed on the skin in all parts of the structure about other than the two loads like air load and ground load other loads are what local normal pressure loads imposed on the skin a conventional aircraft is made up of a fuselage wings and a tail plane so the conventional one having these three in that the stability and that uh, control surface is added so mainly these three things are there now based on that the control surfaces are added in either wing or fuselage the fuselage houses the crew and the payload which can be passenger cargo weapons or fuel depending on the type of aircraft and its function so whatever the types are there if suppose cargo is there then what happen in the, if cargo is there then what happen fuselage houses the crew and payload so crew will be there definitely if that uh, aircraft will fly then definitely the crew place will be there and crew will be there either that is pilot or depending upon the aircraft so crew and payload that payload can be anything what passengers so that we can say that as passenger aircraft cargo that is cargo aircraft if it's a weapon uh, okay then it we are saying that as fighter aircraft so that payload can be anything but in that also you can see definitely the crew will be there yes papa and will be there okay or fuel depending on type of aircraft and its function the wings provided lift that already we had seen in the figure also that both the side it's a provided lift and because of that only the aircraft is moving up and the tail plane is the primary contributor to directional control if suppose they need to move left right or anything that is controlled by the what wing or that one furthermore aileron elevator and the rudder allow the pilots to maneuver their craft and maintain stability in flight while wings flap increase the lift or take off and landing so aileron elevator and the rudder allows the pilot to maneuver their craft and maintain its stability just as if that if you want to move left right okay up and down that can be controlled by the what aileron elevator rudder these things okay and what about while wing flap increases lift or lift for takeoff and landing so what is the use of wing they are just increasing the lift during the takeoff and landing so already we had seen that figure one is there so figure one depicts typical aerodynamic force result exp force results experienced by a std flying aircraft so a std aircraft flying so how it will be there so just see this is the aircraft okay what are the loads will act on that one the force on an aerodynamic surface that is the wing vertical and horizontal tail is caused by a differential pressure distribution caused by incidence camber or both means that so how that pressure difference arises or caused by incidence camber so because of the camber or incidence or camber so or because of both so it is caused by that some incident if uh, happen because of that if camber is there then that one or both the condition simultaneously such a pressure distribution has vertical and horizontal resultant acting at a pressure center so pressure center wherever the cp is there that will act there or you can say center pressure center is what center of pressure okay so that lift will act 
vertically up horizontal will be the drag okay hmm. in practice lift and drag are measured perpendicular to the flight path and parallel to it respectively so whatever the flight path is there okay according to that what we are doing lift and drag are measured perpendicular to the flight so now flight is moving in this direction and lift is what always upward so that is perpendicular here okay so now this one lift and drag are measured perpendicular to the flight path so flight path is this one okay and parallel to it and in next case that will be parallel to that same one as the pressure distribution varies with the speed of wing incidence the position of the cp clearly changes as the pressure distribution will change that cp center of pressure will also change However, there is a point in the refined section where the moment due to lift and drag forces remains constant. So, one point will be there in the refined section. Okay. So, moment due to lift and drag forces remains constant. We replace the lift and drag forces acting at the center of pressure with lift and drag. Lift and drag forces acting at the aerodynamic center that is a sort it's written ac plus a constant moment m naught okay so these things will act in reality the position of ac changes due to compressibility effect at high mach number so what happened due to the position at higher mach number position of ac will change okay because of the compressibility effect in addition to these basic in flight loads fuselage can be pressurized to support hoop stress so whenever the thin cylinder is there then there the closed one the hoop stress will be there if open is there then no hoop stress will be there so for the closed one hoop stress will be there so now what we are doing that there that is the closed loops hence there this uh, hoop stress also will be there hmm. Wings can carry weapon and or extra fuel tank, resulting in additional aerodynamic drag and body forces add to existing bending, shear and torsion. So now what happens? Instead of suppose generally they are having what? 50 passenger. Instead of 50, suppose 55 passenger will be there that day, then what they will do? Okay. So for that only it's a... What's hmm. this? So while engine thrust and weight oh, oh, can affect either the fuselage or the wings depending on their relative position. The ground loads encountered during landing and taxiing subject the aircraft to, con to concentrated shock load via the undercarriage system and the shock leading load produced a given shear maximum bending and torsion. Other loads include engine thrust or the wing or fuselage which are which acts in the plane of symmetry but can cause several fuselage bending moment in the event of engine failure. The concentrated concentrated shock load during a captain during a catapult launch and hydrodynamic pressure on seaplane fuselage or float. So what happened on the other load includes engine thrust. So what is the next engine thrust and on the wings of the fuselage which act in the plane of symmetry but can cause severe fuselage bending moment in the event of engine failure concentrated shock load during a catapult launch. And hydrodynamic pressure on seaplane fuselage not floats. Okay, so this is the reference you can refer this book. Okay, T S E G Maxon Air Aircraft Structure. So this is the first book, or you can see the textbook. We will follow this book in the classroom also. Okay, that T S E G Maxon, and second reference is E S E S Brun Analysis and Design of Flight Vehicle Structure. Try a state of build. Tri state of set company USA 4th edition 1965. So, this is the 
second book which you can refer as a reference book for this topic. So just recall quickly aircraft structural components. So what we discuss in this video first what are the components is there like a uh, fuselage, you no know, rear, the tail wing. Okay, so these are the first of this one means control surface. Okay, wings. These are that components. Now the thing is on that component how the load is acting or now the pressure is acting. So that we have to find. That we are, you should know. Okay, then what are the loads are there? The ground load, air load. These things we had already seen. Okay. Hmm. Then uh, after that, what happened if suppose two loads are the ground load and air load? What about the other loads? Okay, so other loads are what surface force which act on the structure surface, such as hydrodynamic and hydrostatic pressure. Okay, that was this one. Now, body hmm. body force which act over the structure's volume are caused by gravitational and inertial effect. The calculation of the distribution of aerodynamic pressure over various various surfaces on an aircraft's structure is covered in many aerodynamic textbooks and will not be exam will not be attempted here. So based on related to the aerodynamics, whatever is there that is in separate book that you can see there. These resultant in general cause direct load bending, shear, and torsion. Tors in all parts of the structure in addition to the in addition to local normal pressure loads on the skin okay next was the function of a structural element so structural elements are these things wings fuselage tail unit control surface how they are functioning that we had seen just uh, for moving up moving down left right so how these things are say hard. That was can be. Then again, same function of a structure, how that is functioning, those things we had seen in this one. Okay. So if you have any doubt regarding this one, you can just comment on the video or you can contact me so that I can clarify your doubts. Okay. Okay, clear. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.